One of the things I want to talk about is longevity and health and longevity and wellness. What has jujitsu done for you specifically in the last two years and how do you feel it's benefited, benefited you at your age now? Good question. I think about how I answer that because yeah, that's, yeah. it's just become a part of my life. Combative sports have always been a part of my life. Growing up, I, I grew up in an orphanage. It was this every day. Yeah. And the guys who ran the orphanage were World War II combat vets. You got a problem with them? This is the way you solved it. And they let you fight. Yeah. So I grew up fighting and I loved it. Yeah. You can tell I love it out there. Yeah, I just yeah. love it. I love it. You thrive. I love it. This is. Yeah, and then I, I went into. Then I went to high school. My dad remarried and took me. He went to here in Tacoma. South Tacoma back in the day was a tough part of town. Yeah. It's a tough, tough part of town. And you're talking what, mid 60s? Mid 60s, early 60s. I went to high school. I graduated in 63, right across town. Our society was different then. I mean, yeah. it was run by World War II combat vets. And the way you solved your issues was. This, you know, and where you got respect was this. Right. So uh, I went, uh, oh, sports have always been a part of my life. So I played football and then I wrestled. Yep. And then during baseball, I, during the spring. So, but what happened was because I was always playing sports after school, I didn't have any money, I didn't have a job. So I had to figure out how to make some money. No matter how handsome you are, guys, you could have bucks in your pocket or they're gonna find the other guys. So what I did is the Golden Gloves was a big thing in Tacoma back in the day. Right. And they used to spar down at the Tacoma Y. Now remember, I wrestled in high school, but now where did I get my striking from? If you go three rounds, three two minute rounds, they give you 10 bucks. 10 bucks back in those days was huge. I mean, it would buy you dinner, it would buy, it, just, it was huge. Yeah, it was like $100 yeah. today, of course yeah. it was. So I had money, that's how I made my money, was, was sparring with Golden Gloves guys. Well, you had to go all three rounds. If they knocked you out or knocked you down in the third round, you didn't get paid. You get your money. You just got beat up. Yeah. Well, I was very, very fortunate because a guy by the name of Pat, there were two brothers down there, Mike McCarthy and Pat McCarthy. And they were both heavyweight fighters, and one of them was a heavyweight contender. And he says, Mike, and he knew me, because I used to pick up towels afterwards so I could get free membership. He says, you don't belong in there. I said, I need the money, Mike. Yeah. I belong in there. He says, then I'm gonna teach how to survive. So then I went to college. I got a scholarship to West Point for wrestling. Wow. You go to West Point, yeah. you must have got some kind of a scholarship or something, because West Point's hard to get into. It's yeah. hard to get into, and it's even harder to stay into. I'll bet. I mean, it's just- How old were you when you went to West Point? 18. From 18 to 22, I was at West Point. So you did the, you did the boxing in your teens when you yes. were 16, 17? And wrestling. Like that. Okay. So okay. I was a combative guy then. Right. And then when I went to West Point, they taught, it was automatic. You did combative sports as yeah. part of your training, which the other guys beat me in a classroom, but I beat them in the combative sports because yeah. of my background. Right. So. I graduated and then went into the military and I did some martial arts. I just always worked out and trained and then always stayed healthy. Always went to the gym, stayed healthy, stayed active. I never smoked, I never drank. It's not because I was a choir boy, although I love the Lord. Alcohol gave me vertigo. And I found out later in my later life, my vertigo, I still have vertigo issues. Sometimes you see me, I have to step off to the side sometimes. Yeah. I love it, I'm like, you okay, Mike, you okay? Yeah. yeah, I'm cool, thanks for asking. It's cool that people care. Right. And right. excited about each other and how they help one another. That's, yeah. I just love it in there. Yeah, yeah. I love the people, I love it. Just love it all. It's a great community. It's, it's wonderful, it's the best community ever. It's, it's, I'm back in the military with these guys. Right. So many of them, a guy goes down, everybody comes, nobody gets left behind. They, yeah. they come and help him, you okay, yeah. everything all right? Absolutely. Take a break, Mike, you'll be okay. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you used to have jujitsu for all ages, and then after I joined, that sign came down, you didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. I joke about, I'm the reason the sign came down for right, all ages. Right. I don't think you figured out a 77 year old. Yeah. First day, Josh. Oh, I love Josh, Professor Josh. He looks at me and he goes, and I sat down, catch my eyes, he get down next to me. He said, Mike, what are you doing in here? Said, Came to do jujitsu. Yeah. Give me a chance. I'm yeah. all right. I've had some experience. Right. And he did. Yeah. And I just became part of the class and I love it. It's changed my life. Yeah. I live about a mile and a half. Jujitsu became came on my radar screen about 20 years ago. When we came at kind of on a national scene with the MMA and everything. Right. right. And I love watching the MMA. I think if I was a younger guy, I'd probably be an MMA, at least try it. I mean, yeah. MMA fighter. I love that stuff. But I was too old for that. But so I couldn't do jujitsu because four kids, I got married right out of West Point, had four children, and I'm starting my business. And you're a businessman, you know, it just takes all your time. It, it takes does. All your, it just yeah. takes so much. Yeah. So for years, I'm raising my kids. A couple years ago, my, a few years ago, all my kids are gone, and I live about a mile down the street. I drive by here and I go, 
jujitsu for everyone, all ages. And I go, I drive by it too. From, yeah. I'm driving by it for a year. And I say to myself, Mike, how many times are you going to drive by there before, before you, you go, go in and talk to me? Yeah. And I remember when you did come in and talk to me. Yeah. I remember I when you came in and you finally came in. You said, yeah. am I too old for this? And what was my response? Now come on in. Yeah. Just come you're, on in. You're never too old. You're never too old. You're come never on too in. old. But I kind of think it's cool because there's a lot of young guys. They kind of respect where I'm at, my age. And yeah. I, and I can share some of my life experience. Right. With some of the younger guys. So you're like a mentor. Yeah, it's yeah, some yeah that's a good guys. word. Yeah. You know, they got just life problems with guys that are in their 20s and sure. their 30s and their 40s. I've been there. I've done that, man. Yeah. And I can't, They don't have it figured out. You figured it I out. I figured it out the right. hard way. And I came out the other end. Yeah. It's just like jujitsu. You, you, you've been around you you this long. You figure it out, man. Yeah. You're going to make mistakes, but you're going to learn from your mistakes. Right. I taught my sons, it's okay to lose. Yeah. Play your sports. Right. It's okay to lose. Yeah. Once in a while. Sure. Make a habit of it. Yeah. But what, what you never... Never, never, never is okay is quitting. Right. That's what I teach mm. to all my members, to all my clients, yeah. is don't freaking give up. It's going to be hard. You're going to have things to overcome. You just talked about life. Take, take jujitsu out of what you just said and put in life. Right. And it's the same thing. Yeah. But the first thing they taught me at West Point, I, I think the most important thing, I learned a lot at West Point, my training, my education, but the most important thing I got is what they taught me. Winners never quit. Yep. Quitters never win. Yep. It just, they, they, they put that it's down. True. They it's put true. it in my DNA. Yeah. And I'm out there every day when I'm getting, just getting, and I, I think, don't quit, Mike. Yeah. Just keep going. Just keep going. The buzzer will go off a little bit. Just keep going. Don't yeah. go. And I, and, yeah. And I, even when I, now I'm kind of an older guy and I help the other guys behind me. Right. And I'll say, I, I can tell they're giving up. Don't give up, man. Yeah. Keep going. Right. So anyway, I'm, I think, I'm in and I love it. Yeah, I think one of the things that you provide for this gym is you're an inspiration for everybody. And I'm in my 50s now. So many people come in around my age. Maybe they have kids that train here. Maybe yeah. they come in and inquire and they say, oh, well, you know, I've never done, I've never done jujitsu. I don't have a martial art background. And, you know, I'm 50 years old and I'm where I'm 45 and I'm just doing this for my kids. And I said, yeah. you need to set an example. Yes. For your kids and yes. everybody here. And, and you're yes. not too old. Trust me, you're not too old. Here's a guy that came in and started when he was 76. Yeah. He's thriving. He's doing well. Tough as shit. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, and, you know, Josh and everyone, these are tough guys. They're so tough guys. You're, you're learning from tough guys here. But this school has something for everybody. Yes. So people that want to compete, people that don't want to compete, yeah. people that just want a self-defense yeah. and then people that want to be like competitors. They want to go to pans. They want to go to worlds. Yeah. But, but there's something for everybody here. And, and I think your, your ability to stick with this, push through the aches and pains and get through to the other side. And that leads me to the next part of the equation and what I suppose as a coach, as an owner, and I started off as a strength and conditioning and a, and a, and a, and a coach and a personal okay. trainer for okay. people, helping guys like Mike live a longer, more fulfilling life. Talk a little bit about your experience in doing those same things that I did and the same things that I okay. recommended suggestions when you kind of got started into the longevity okay. thing. Right across the street is a golf course, first course golf course. I joined here when I was 35 years old. I played with the older generation. I didn't play young guys. And my dad, and all of a sudden I started seeing guys that, I'm talking the guys that on Omaha Beach. I saw them getting old. I didn't want to be that way. And I saw my dad getting old. And I, I just, I, and they tell Mike getting old is horrible. And they tell, yeah. so I became in my late, I'd say in my early 40s, mid 40s, I became a student of anti-aging. So we're talking like 30 years ago. Yes. Right? So yes. Like my mid, 40s. Mid 40s. Mid, 40s mid, yeah, mid 90s. Early, yes. Okay. So what I did is I just became a student of, there are a lot of books. Doctors written them. Athletes write them. And I just got a compiled of them. It's like a three-legged stool. Like a three-legged stool. Yeah. Okay. One of them is physical activity. Yep. But that's not all. You, I go to, I can take you over to LA Fitness and I can show you guys that, that I've worked out with over there for 10 or 15 years. Yeah. They're not any better shape and they work out hard and they're 65 years old. Yeah. They're not in any better shape than they were at 50. Right. Matter of fact, they're less. All they're doing is work. You got to work harder. Yeah. To maintain. Right. And then after a while, you just can't work harder anymore. Do you feel that a lot of people go through the motions and they work out, but they don't really look to better themselves? They don't follow up what they do in the gym with like nutrition and balancing out their hormones and... I think all they got to do is work out. Right. 
well, when I got into my 40s, I was still working out hard. The days between recovery were longer, right. more time. I couldn't do what I couldn't lift what I used to do. I yep. couldn't run as fast as I could. But yet I'm working harder than I did when I did 10 years ago. Yeah. It was all catching up with me. My body was just getting softer. What was happening to me was happening to my dad and those other guys that I didn't want to be like. Yeah. Our body... When we're young, 18 and 20s and into 30s, produces a lot of testosterone, produces a lot of growth hormones, and then it quits producing those. Diminishing returns. A lot diminishing, of diminishing returns. Right. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. And most people just accept it, right? They just accept it. They just it. accept it yeah, and, instead old, of man. being proactive about it, yeah. which is part of the problem. And, and, and I think a big part of it is lack of education. People just, it is. It's a lack you self educated yourself. Yes. You you read books, you yep. articles, I'm sure oh, magazines, yeah. talk to and guys that talk to people, yeah. right? And right. It all starts like out here. Yeah, I'm learning jujitsu. I'm not because I'm a smart guy. They're teaching me. I can get. Yeah. I had guys that knew guys that you want to learn how to do jitsu go to a jujitsu gym and have some have the guys that have been there before you teach you but you got to go to a doctor first you got to get doctors right what's going on you can't just do black market you can't, stuff you, you gotta can't do it you got to do it the safe way you got you got to right. do it that's the only way it's a safe yeah. way whatever you do yeah. anything it's got to be the safe way it's got to be, has the right to be way. oversight medical oversight and i had medical but try to find a doctor that knows anything about that they don't know back in those days it was yeah few and far between yeah you're right yeah so I started just, there was a doctor in Seattle. He's still got a radio show, Dr. Uh, Jerry Mixon. He started the longevity clinic yeah. up in the late 90s. And I was going, now he's huge. He's got clinics in Seattle to go. But he started as, as, as that type of doctor. We're going to do your blood test. We're going to put you on hormones, all this. And I, and I optimize, said, optimize. So I went yeah. up to see the guy. And he yeah. was just starting. Now he's so big, he, 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 oh, he's got a whole bunch of doctors. But I was one of his original patients. So let me ask you, when yeah. you went to him, were you deficient? And oh, things did they find? Oh my your, God! Okay, the first thing he does. Yes, he, yeah, I was okay. efficient. So, but yet I was still in pretty good shape for a forty. Matter of right. fact, I was in better shape at a forty something than all the other guys were at forty something. Well, because you were working something. out, working out, right. riding my bike. So, well, the first thing they do is they do a complete blood panel. Yeah, I don't mean just three or four things like your doctor does in your yearly physical. And he said, "Oh, Mike, you're 47 years old and you've got the hormones of an 87-year-old man." Wow. That's what I said. He asked me, "What age do you want to be again?" And I said, "How about 33?" Yeah. And he said, "Why 33?" And I said, "Well, I'm a Christian Jesus guy." I said, "That 33 is when Jesus died on the cross. That must have been men's optimum age." Right. After 33, these guys get one and two year contracts. Yeah. They don't get five year contracts. Yeah, so, yeah. so he talked about 33. Right. So I right. said, make me 33. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> so he said, okay. He made me 33 yeah. within, a, within a matter of months. Right. Next thing you know, I'm just, just a buff again. Yeah. But I'm still working, the whole time I'm working out. And so. And now you're recovering better. Oh, And I'm now you probably have more energy and more vitality. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You can go longer. You can go yep. stronger. You can go longer. Yep. And so then what happened was. Congress said because of all this baseball stuff, doctors can no longer prescribe human growth hormones. Yeah. She says, can't do it for you anymore, Mike. Right. Now, in this state, the FDA, it, things have, I've gone through 20 years of this, I've seen full cycle. So now, doctors can now re-prescribe for certain conditions, human growth hormones, the FDA says, in the United States, but four states cannot allow doctors, you lose your license for it, even though it's approved by the federal government. Washington is one of four states where doctors cannot prescribed human growth hormones user license. Stem cells came up on my radar. Right. Oh yeah, they started they started coming up on and they're on my radar. So And to give people a little background on stem cells, just to interject really yeah, quick. Yeah, please. Joe Rogan yeah. has some buddies that opened a clinic down in Tijuana. There's yeah. many clinic there's clinics in Colombia. Yep. South America. Panama. There's several Panama. There's several clinics in in Mexico. Yes. And so what people do is they started these clinics down there. These doctors have these clinics. People from the States. People from the States go down to Mexico for all kinds of things. Dental. Yeah. Medical. They actually have really good services. Medicine. Medicine. Yeah. yeah. They have great medicine in Mexico. People. Cheap. People think it's a third world country. Yeah. And that, and, but they have like very advanced techniques, very advanced medicine. And these doctors are every bit as good as the ones in the States. What was your experience with stem cell therapy and and, and how have you benefited well, from I'll, it? I'll give you a, a good example. The amazing thing that I think about what I've done up here is this morning, I'm an ex-military guy, so I log everything. This morning was my 175th lesson in jujitsu. Okay. 
and I go hard. You've seen me. I go yeah. hard. Or I go. I tell you, go hard or go home. So right. I, I go hard. So this is my 75th. I got my blue belt on 145. Okay. And so I have 30, 30 lessons. I blue belt. Yeah. But what happened was I'm too old to get a shoulder operation that's not going to work. Yeah. I'm too old to yeah. get knee operation, knee replacements that aren't going to work. Right. I have a friend of mine who's a chiropractor on the other side of town. This was about 10 years ago. His brother is a team doctor for the Atlanta Falcons. I said, when your brother comes to town, I want to talk to him. He says, he's coming to town next week. I yeah. said, can you set up a meeting? He says, yeah, nice young guy. And I went in and saw him. <laughs> I had a t-shirt on, summertime. Yeah. And he looked at me and said, how old are you? 70, I was about 70 at the time. He said, what's wrong? And I said, my back, I've got a horrible, horrible back. I couldn't even, I couldn't do anything, my back. He said, come to my brother's office tomorrow, we'll x-ray you. I go into his office the next morning, he x-rays me. And he says, Mike, I've been a team doctor for an NFL team for 10 years. This is the worst back I've ever seen. Six months later, I'm talking to Josh at Dream Body, just like I'm talking to you. And I yeah. said, Josh, okay, now my back was completely healed. Now my shoulder, I have what they call shoulder impingement syndrome. Yep. Across the street, I played golf with two of the best orthopedic doctors in the whole world. They were the best. And they, they then I always go in, they did an MRI, and they said, Mike, your shoulder's gone. Weightlifting, tackle football, everything at 50-something. Yeah. Everything yep. was gone. Yep. And, 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 and he says, your shoulder's completely gone. You're beyond operation. So I told Josh, I go, hey, Josh, can you come down? I want to do this. And he says, yeah. I went down. And within a week, I was like, look at this. Look at this. Like, and I can. Yeah. <laughs> so these are mesenchymal stem cells, correct? They're mesenchymal right. stem cells, yes. Right. They're how much time, when you went down and got the stem mm -hmm. cells, how much time did you have to take off for those stem cells to proliferate and actually heal your shoulder? Was there any downtime or did you? No. And not for those. Okay. Because I was still, let's just say, for instance, if I, if I had my shoulder, well, you're a personal trainer. If my shoulder was healing, I could still work out my lower body. Yeah. When they did my lower body, I could work out my upper body. Okay. So I, I just kept going and I could always ride my bike. I'd always right. ride my bike. So then um, the first one, I did my shoulder. And then, whoa, I fell off my bike hard. I was a cyclist. I was at an event and I turned and hit and I knocked, I hurt my hip really, really bad. Yeah. And I would see a doctor and he says, Mike, you're lucky you didn't break your hip. And I, the doctor said I had the worst contusion and the worst hematoma he'd ever seen. And he says, but you, you're starting to get arthritis there. And I could tell when I rolled over at night, I was, my yeah. hip would hurt. Me. I called Josh. I said, Josh, man, I need to come and see you. Hook me up with Dr. Romo. I had the MRI, everything, my yep. hips. So I went down there and I told Josh, if you're going to do one, do both. Yeah. I encourage it. It doesn't cost that much more. If you get one shoulder, do them both. Right. So they did both my hips. No more arthritis. But this is interesting because now, so what, I can still work out my upper body. Yep. I can still ride my bike. They also treat um, with a nebulizer if you've had COVID. Yes. And you've had lung damage. Yes. Um, they can do the nebulizer, which yes. heals your lungs. There's a lot of people with long COVID or COVID have you know, um, yes. damage. And so it can heal that. They're, well. start, they're starting, first of all, they started with the joints. I mean, let me answer your question. Six weeks later, after that stem cell on my knee, I had three tears. Yeah. Six weeks. You're training? I'm back full contact. Yeah. That was a year ago, and it, it was the end of October. I missed the middle of September. I took six weeks off. I didn't work out because I, I did my knees, the other knee at the same time. Right. My shoulder, so my whole body was, so I took six weeks off, let my body heal up, came back into the gym. That was the end of October. So we're into the end of October now, and I've gone over 100 lessons now, full contact. And, and look at me, I haven't, I think I sprained a thumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think... It, it would stand a reason that you pay attention to your health, you getting in on this cutting edge technology. Yeah. A lot of people don't know about stem cells yet. A lot of people know that HRT is out there. They know that, you know, peptides are out there. Yep. But only the inner circle of professional athletes yep. and doctors yes, yes. and people that do this know about this kind of therapy and know about the longevity benefits, know about how this prolongs you to be an athlete and to be able to participate in anything. If you didn't have stem cells, do you think you oh, would no. even be I, training anymore? I mean, you might I, be working. Without stem cells, let me show you without stem cells. Yeah. This was, yeah, that's how you got up. 
It was painful. Yeah. Tears had run down my feet. Yeah. It was horrible. And, Look at me now. And I, you've had a lifetime like I have of beating the crap out of your body. I beat the crap Just, out yeah, of myself. Yeah, we beat the crap we out of weights, it. wrestling, jiu-jitsu, football. Street I played, fighting. Yeah, I played football for 15 years. I was a sparring partner for oh. some UFC guys. Yep. And I beat, I beat my body up. And you can extend oh. your training and still be competitive if you pay attention to your body and you get things checked out and you get these cutting edge technologies yes. and get trained yes. by professionals that know how to do this. This is how I train my clients. This is how I train my athletes. This is how when people come to me and they want to get ready for MMA fights, worlds, pans, this is the way you have to treat your body. My regular doctor, for 10 years I was doing this, he told me how bad it would be for me. It was my age. He was getting old and I was getting younger. And, my, and he says, don't do this, Mike. You don't know what the long-term consequences are going to be. This is funny. And the two doctors I play golf with over here, the orthopedic surgeons, I was down there my last, he retired a few years ago. And about six months after he retired, I was down there saying, Josh. And Josh is laughing. He says, Mike, I can't tell you their names because of medical confidence. But I'll tell yeah. you, he says, three doctors came down here mm -hmm. from Tacoma, Washington, and they knew you. Yeah. And I said, how do you know they knew me? You know what they said? Do to us what you do for Mike. Yeah. That was, that was what they didn't even know what I did. Right, but right. Do, do for us what yeah. you do for Mike. Yeah, hook it up. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. You've been such a good uh, part of this gym and culture and community and so inspiring for people. I, I want this story to get out there so people know that they don't have to give up. They don't. And they don't have to quit on life and quit on their goals and quit on training. And yeah. maybe they're, if you're an athlete before, you can still be an athlete. It may change a little bit. Yeah. We don't do what we did when we're 20, but although we still give a lot of people hell, but but you have to pay attention to your health markers. I'm a coach for something called Inside Tracker. Okay. And they do a 44 test biomarkers test. They do DNA analysis. Okay. My inner age is less than my chronological age because I'm healthier and, yeah. and I treat my body correctly with these protocols. Yes. And the only way you're going to do that is by having a doctor evaluate where your body's at right now, what deficiencies they can fix yes. and how they can optimize yeah. things in your body to more youthful levels. We're not trying to become Arnold Schwarzenegger no. at our age, but we're trying to live As healthy we and we're trying to be competitive yes. and we're trying to have the energy and the vitality that we had 20 years ago. And I have as much energy today as I did when I was playing college football. Oh, I may not be able to jump as high and yeah. run as fast yeah. as I did when I was in my mid twenties, but I can still train, I can still uh, compete. And I, I think that's what it's all about. And I just want people to know that um, you don't have to give up, but you gotta be smart and you have to reach out to people. You just said you gotta be smart. You gotta be smart. You gotta be smart. Yeah. What I did my biomarkers, they say there's two ages a man has. You've got right. your chronological age, yep. this is 78, I'm 78. And you're biological. I'm 31. Right. Wow. My biological age. But when I first started, I was 81. Yeah. And what these things have done for me in the last 20 years, was, it, 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 they work. Right. There's a reason these athletes are taking them. They work. These yeah. guys got multi-million dollar contracts. Yeah. They're not going to do anything to jeopardize those guys. Right. And there's they, a reason why you're doing jujitsu. Yeah. 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 Well, I love it. Yeah. I love the guys. Yeah. Love you for starting the gym. Thank yeah. you. Right in my You're neighborhood, welcome. man. You're welcome. Right yeah. down the street of my I'm glad you street. walked in because when you, I am too. I, when, when you first walked in and talked to me, yeah. you asked me these questions and you were like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Yeah. I don't know if I can compete. I used to wrestle and I used to do competitive sports. I was in the army. Yeah. You know, I wrestled at West Point yeah. and you're telling me all these things. And I said, Mike, you can do this. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you can do Come it. Come on in. Come join the gym. And and it's, you know, it's been a great benefit for you. It's also been a great benefit for the gym. I think this is a great benefit for all my gyms and a great story for all my gyms because people need to know that age is just a number. Oh, diet. Let me tell you. Tell you. Nutrition. Okay, big nutrition. Color. Yeah. Okay, that's my weakness. People ask me, Mike, 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 tell me about your diet. I don't eat much. It That's, works for you. It works for me. It works I don't for you. Eat, yeah. I don't eat often. I don't eat much. But when I do eat, I eat what I want. Yeah. It's not junk. I mean, it's not right. crazy shit. You know? Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's just you eat normal chicken and eggs yes. and, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. Good but, sources of carbs. And but I do a lot. Of, uh, I, I, I'm a member of Purity Products and I probably take probably 20 supplements a day too. I do yeah. a lot of supplements. Vitamin, vitamin D, D. Vitamin D, vitamin C. Magnesium. Magnesium. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every morning I get about e 20 of them. Yep. Plus, I've got a heart condition, I've got a kidney condition, 
And uh, it didn't stop me from going here. I mean, I just, but, I mean, they, they got me on. I got, so, you, so you have to take supplements. I have to. To retain, yeah, yeah. to keep healthy. Yeah, which is important. To do this. Yeah, to do this. This keeps you healthy. Yeah. It'll make you healthy. Well, when I came in here, I, went, I was in really good physical shape. I rode, in the last 10 years, I rode my bike 15,000 miles. I was, a weight, I was in weight training all the time. I did hot yoga for 10 years. So I was super active, super fit. Yeah. So when I walked in, when I came in to see you, I was fit. Right. But I wasn't jujitsu fit. It wasn't ju yeah, it's a different, <laughs> it's, it's a, a whole different, yeah, it's different, different beast. World. And yeah. I knew it would be. Yeah. So I said, that's why I gave myself a hundred classes. I said, no matter what, I'm going to 100 because it's going to take... I, I think home. that's a good rule to go by. You, to, I think you know, parents I guys, should have their kids do a minimum of 100. 100 I think every adult 100, 100, should do 100 classes 100. and give it a chance. Oh, you know how good it feels when you hit 10. Oh, my God, I just yeah. hit 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, what it does for you, not even your mind. Right. And boy, you walk out after a jujitsu class. I, sit, I forget, I was sitting there and he was huffing and he was puffing and he was hurting. And I looked over at him. I think it was Nick. And I said, Nick, do you know how lucky we are? We're about ready to puke our guts out. Yeah. Sweat pouring off of us. Right. And I said, most people in this whole world would never know what it feels like to feel like we feel right now. Yeah. And he yeah. looked at me smiling. He says, Mike, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And we went back out, Carter, went out and rolled some more. Yeah. Just the feeling it gives you. And then I'll tell you the other feeling it gives you. Talk about empowerment. I'm 78 years old. I walk out that door. Half the guys in there are going to kick my ass. Yeah. But they're jujitsu guys. I walk out that door and ain't nobody going to kick my ass. Right. Nobody's going to with my family. Yep. You can still defend yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. With all the random violence that's going on out right now, yeah. people just getting grabbed and with all the homelessness. You have to know self-defense. I want somebody to randomly grab me. I'm waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. To test it out. <laughs> test to, it to, out. To test it out. Know. Yeah. Between West Point and the military, I've had the best training in the world. Yeah. That is some of the best training in the world. It is some that, of the best training. It in the is. World. I, I yeah. know. I've been there. I've seen the best training in the world. I've yeah. been a product of the best training in the world. Yeah. Well, first of all, the military has the best training in the world. Right. And I was in some of the elite units in the military that got yeah. the best of the best training. Right. This what, is. What did you do in the military? I did. I was a special ops guy. I just okay. did for the army, right? No, I. I did at Air Force. I went oh, to West okay. Point. I was the last class that could tr transfer and do an inner service transfer oh, because okay. my dad was in the Air Force. I went into Air Force, but I went to pilot school and I washed out of pilot school because I had a depth perception problem. Well, like you, you don't even know how many concussions you had. Yeah. When we were young, you just got knocked out. You went in three or four plays later. Yeah. You got knocked out on the mat today. They told you, they yeah, told back you, in the day, you get smelling. your ass back in. They'd give you smelling salts, wouldn't yeah. they? And they'd yep. hold up fingers. And they say, how many fingers? And you say, three, or maybe it's two. Well, that's close enough. Yeah, close enough. Go back. That's no joke. I yeah, I know. I, I remember. They, back in the day. they were still doing that in the 80s when I was playing football. But now what happened is, as we've gotten older, you're going to see this. You probably haven't been there yet because I'm ahead of you. The concussions that we've had back in the day are, are affecting us because every time you get it, and they should because of the young guys getting good. They got to know about these concussions. Yeah. These guys have concussion protocol. I'm in concussion. Now there's protocol. I'm 78 years old and I'm in concussion protocol with yeah. a bunch of 20, 25 year old guys and young girls that have had their heads banged up playing soccer. Yeah. And I feel so sorry for them. But what happened is every, when you get a concussion, every part of your brain it, it, it gets damaged. And so I have noise sensitivity. The kids, I say, that's too loud. That's too loud. Too light. Too light. I have light sensitivity. I have noise sensitivity. I have vertigo. I have depth perception at night. And I'm telling all these because at least it's, the, the person doing my protocol says, do you have depth perception problem? I've had it all my life. I worked out of pilot school. I come in and hit the, didn't know when to pull out. Right. So, yeah. And they say a lot of my problems, old problems now, but get this, they're doing spinal now. My next, my next stem cell trip, yep. they're, they're doing heart they're doing prostates yeah just a long needle right into your prostate right and older guys i mean hey guys you get you, get, you live long you yeah get, it's prostate problems right so i'm gonna so i'm gonna I'm, my next now i've got all my body parts done most yeah. of them i'm starting on my organs so my next one's going to be my prostate and my next one's going to be they do it in your back they take it this way well my, i'm gonna have my kidneys done no they do yeah. that right in your kidneys i got a kidney problem i'm just borderline kidney problem i take kidney but my next one's going to be because of all my concussions and my brain damage yeah they're finding out now that they can do spinal tap spinal tap oh, okay and i've talked to a couple of because that goes to your brain stem yes from your spine to your brain stem and then to your brain yeah. obviously yeah yeah okay i get it so i've talked to a couple of guys that are down there and one of them was the dan who was the clinic manager he, he was an afghan combat vet yep had i had i got discharged because i had what they call tbi traumatic brain injury he got a traumatic brain injury from a percussion in a in in, in combat situation yeah and they couldn't help in the va 
he's, he's, he's like me, he studied, he studied, he found out about stem cells. Yeah. So he goes down to Mexico, and now he's a clinic manager. He took that, and he says, Mike, I have no more headaches, everything. And I said, it really worked, Dan? I'm yeah. talking to a guy that knows. He's done it. I said, sign me up. I want to come down next. I yeah. want to, I want to yeah. do my back. I want to get my head fixed. Nice. Well, man, thank you so much yeah, thank for you. Uh, being a member of this gym. Sure. And I'm so glad that you, you know, kind of decided not to quit and came in and walked in. And I know you contemplated it several times before you finally came in. Finally came in yep. and talked to me. And we broke down those barriers, those self-limiting beliefs yeah. that you had, and you, you, and you gave the mats chance, and I think we've both benefited from it. So thank you so much. You know, when I, you know, when those, yeah. you know when those beliefs went away? Yeah. My first role, my wrestling skills came back to me. It was just like, yep. when you're well-trained, your training will never leave you. Yeah, you it's like riding a bike. It's like riding, good. I yeah. didn't ride a bike for 50 years. Yeah. All of a sudden I got on my bike, and within the next 10 years, I rode 15,000 miles. Yeah. It's, kind of, yeah, it's like riding a bike. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. yeah. And as soon as I got back on that mat and started rolling out there, I didn't do jujitsu, but my wrestling skills, I had mat skills. I knew I was in the right place. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I knew it. yeah absolutely. Well, thank you thank so you. much. You're welcome. And this was You're a great welcome. interview. Um, I hope it helps keep, people. Keep, I hope it helps keep people. Keep on. I hope to see you in here in your, yeah. your mid-80s training. So. I committed. I'm, you know, yeah. I asked him today, a couple of blue belts. I said, how long? How long before? If I, if I keep up my intensity and I stay. You're going to get your black belt someday. The key, You're going to get your black belt. So yeah, the, key, absolutely. the key to any of us in there yeah. is staying healthy. Yeah. You're not healthy. You're not going to do it. The key yeah. is health. And I've had a lot of guys, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, they're kind of, Mike, what's going on? I said, I'm telling you right now, I'm supplementing. I'm doing hormones. Yeah. I'm doing stem cells. And now I got guys that I think will soon be maybe getting stem cells. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, cool, thanks again, and- uh, It's a pleasure, yep. thank you so yep. much. Good, yep. good to see you, thank, thank you. Mike.